There are lies, damn lies, statistics, and then there are surveys and doublespeak. Reporters Without Borders released its 2016 press freedom ranking, and it's just as bad as you would imagine. Apparently, the media in Germany is actually very, very free, and the main threat to press freedom in Germany is not governmental censorship, the insanely idiotic speech laws, and the chokehold the state holds over most of the media via state-funded organizations. <laughs> no, 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 don't be silly. No, the main threat to press freedom in Germany is the far right. Let's explore. Hello everyone and welcome to the Freedom Alternative. Now there is a reason I'm very skeptical of international rankings, even when they tell the story I want to hear, which they rarely do anyway. The reason is that most of the time such rankings have a huge disconnect from, well, from reality. This is particularly a problem with rankings that pertain to things that are not easy to measure, such as the degree of economic freedom or the degree of press freedom. The latter will be our focus in this episode, while I'll leave the economics one for a later date. So, for the purposes of this video, I'll simply provide several examples on why rankings concerning press freedom in various countries and jurisdictions have little to do with reality once you look at things from a liberty perspective, i.e. negative rights, rather than a feeling perspective and a positive rights perspective. For example, coming from Politico, Ireland to get social media watchdog. Very short article, quote, The Irish government is finalizing plans to create an independent watchdog authority responsible for keeping social media platforms accountable for online abuse. Minister for Communications Dennis Norton uh, will meet with the ministerial colleagues next week to discuss the establishment of a new watchdog to monitor social media like Facebook and Twitter in their efforts to remove abusive content, bullying and harassment, the Irish Independent reported Tuesday. The watchdog would be called the Digital Safety Commissioner and would produce a code of conduct for platforms to remove abusive content. The minister proposing the plan suffered from online abuse by internet trolls when he had a bicycle accident early January, the paper reported. The European Commission is considering drafting guidelines for internet platforms on how best to flag and remove abusive or illegal content. The measures, which likely won't be legally binding, could be released as soon as this spring. Alright. Now with that government in mind, let's see where Ireland falls on the Reporters Without Borders ranking. According to this map, Ireland is the ninth freest country in the world, with a tiny score of just 12.40. And when we click on Find Out More, we see this, quote, The highly concentrated media ownership is a major problem. Independent news and media controls 40% of the daily and Sunday newspaper market. The 1937 constitution guarantees media freedom, uh, freedom but defamation lawsuits are common. Finally, interviewing police resources has been virtually impossible since the Garda Siochana Act of 2005, which bans police officers from talking to journalists without prior authorization. Officers uh, contravening the ban risk dismissals, a fine, or up to seven years in prison." Close quote. So, you're not allowed to speak with the police, you risk frequent legal harassment via bullshit defamation lawsuits, and transparency of the police is virtually non-existent by law. And that's the ninth freest press in the world. Now, judging by this standard, the rest of the world, except the first eight, should be much, much worse than this, right? Well, no. In fact, this ranking has very little to do with reality. Let's look at Italy, ranked 77th in the world, like most of West Africa and Central Eastern Europe, except Romania and Poland, which are ranked better. Uh, what does it say on Italy? Quote, 
In May 2015, the daily La Repubblica reported that between 30 and 50 journalists were under police protection because they had been threatened. The level of violence against reporters, including verbal and physical intimidation and death threats, is alarming. Journalists investigating corruption and organized crime are the ones who are targeted most. In the Vatican City, it is the judicial system that is harassing the media in connection with the Vati Leaks and Vati Leaks 2 scandals. Two journalists are facing up to eight years in prison as a result of writing books about corruption and intrigue within the Holy See, close quote. So, Italy gets a bad rap for something another country is doing. I mean, just in case it was missed from the picture, Vatican City is a different country. How about uh, Italy's neighbor in the ranking, the tiny African nation of Benin? Benin is ranked 78th, and for Benin it says, quote, Benin's journalists enjoy some freedom of expression, and even if they are sometimes prosecuted and convicted, the sentences are rarely implemented. But the opposition has had no access to state TV since the current government took over. A new media law has decriminalized media offenses except for insulting the president and endangering national security, close quote. So, in other words, Outside the state TV, you can pretty much do and say whatever you damn please, because nothing's going to really happen to you. That's what their report says. So, which one is freer? Ireland, where you can go to jail for seven years for speaking with the journalists if you're a cop, or you're not allowed to ask anything about the police before being allowed by the governmental overlords if you're a journalist, or Benin, where you can actually ask anyone whatever you damn please and print the answers in your own newspaper and no one can realistically do anything about it. Serious question. Also, to my knowledge, the government of, let's say, Bosnia and Herzegovina has no plans of censoring anything and in fact allow any journalist to ask any state employee anything and anywhere and then print it. In fact, Reporters Without Borders says about Bosnia that it has the world's most liberal media freedom laws and that the only noticeable issue is that the crowded justice system makes some weird types of defamation lawsuits to still occur, but they never end in conviction because defamation has been decriminalized 14 years ago. Yet despite this, Bosnia is ranked 68th in the world and Ireland is ranked the 9th. Now, mind you, it is not my intention to pick up on Ireland. Nothing personal about, against Ireland. In fact, I enjoy drinking with Irish folks and they have far more sensible tax laws than is the norm in the European Union. But nevertheless, their press is objectively less free than the press in Bosnia, Benin, Italy and most of the countries of Europe. Here's another example, Germany. Germany is ranked the 16th in the world, and apparently the highest threat to media freedom in Germany is the far right. Reporters Without uh, Borders says about Germany, quote, The law bans uh, hate speech, Holocaust denial and Nazi propaganda, but far-right groups target the media regardless. Since 2014, there has been growing harassment, threats and violence against journalists covering radical right-wing groups, especially the Islamophobic and xenophobic group Pegida. The other source of consent for journalists is the 2009 anti-terrorism law, which allows the police to conduct clandestine surveillance operations, including searches of homes, inspection of computer hard drive and phone tabs, and threatens the confidentiality of their sources." Close quote. Now this is literally fake news. At least the first part of it. If there had been a case about a journalist beaten by a Pegida member, it would have made global headlines because it fits the leftist German narrative that Islamists are great and that the people in the Islamocritic sector of the society are the real danger. Yet it did not happen. Meanwhile, your house can be raided by the Bundespolizei which is the Germany's FBI, essentially, for expressing politically incorrect opinions about progress, diversity, multiculturalism, and cultural enrichment. This doesn't happen anywhere in Eastern Europe, yet according to this ranking, all of Eastern Europe, except Slovakia, is significantly less free than Germany. <laughs> and this is why I don't trust these rankings. 
This particular ranking also has multiple methodol methodological flaws. For instance, you lose points if the media in your country is political. That's it, just because it's political. It doesn't matter if there are no entry barriers, it doesn't matter that the political partisanship is openly acknowledged, like it's the case in the United Kingdom, Romania, Poland, France, or the United States. Just because it is political per se, that's somehow a bad thing. And even if we were to assume that's a sound judgment, what's that got to do with press freedom? How is freedom impeded because Breitbart exists? How is the press less free because Huffington Post exists, or the Young Turks, or Infowars? Serious question. And the question that the Reporters Without Borders systematically refuse to answer. The mentality behind most of these rankings is inherently socialistic, even though many of the folks working at this may not be socialists themselves, as Olavo de Carvalho explained in the interview I subtitled on Christmas Eve, we are still in the era when most discussions are framed using the extreme leftist system. This is noticeable if you read the questionnaire that they give to journalists, for instance. In the question uh, rank B3, they ask the journalist how much of an obstacle to start up a media venue is represented by financial constraints, but they ask this without any context. Well, that is socialist thinking uh, per se, because not all financial constraints are created equal. If the financial constraints are because uh, someone finds out that you want to start a newspaper that is opposed to a certain political party or certain business interests or the government, then yes, you can make the case that this is an indicator of lower media freedom. But if the financial constraints are the result of your own incompetence or the result of your refusal to move several kilometers away from where you are in the country, so you'll be closer to banks and or other investors, that's not a reduction of media freedom. It's called business reality and applies to any business. It's nothing personal with the media. Yet this survey ranks both situations as being equal. Now, by that standard, we could argue that there is a systemic lack of banana freedom in Finland. Why? Because if you are Finnish and want to raise bananas, you have to move to Greece or Italy because there's no way you can efficiently grow bananas in Finland and still make a profit. In addition to this, if you followed their own formula, and I did, I cannot conclude anything else than that this organization outright lies. For instance, question B7 asks, to what extent are private media economically dependent on direct or indirect state subsidies? Note, 1 signifies no dependence at all, 10 signifies complete dependence. The correct answer for this in Sweden is 9 out of 10. Almost all of the press is dependent on the government because the press in Sweden hasn't been free since the 1950s. Yet for some reason, Sweden is ranked 8th in the world. Meanwhile, the United Kingdom, which offers zero subsidies outside the BBC, is ranked the 38th in the world, a drop in four spots since the previous year, even as the media freedom in Britain has improved. A similar level of complete lack of honesty can be seen in the description of the United States, which is ranked the 41st in the world in this table, and it says about the US the following, quote, U.S. media freedom enshrined in the First Amendment uh, to the 1787 Constitution has encountered a major obstacle. The government's war on whistleblowers who leak information about its surveillance activities, spying and foreign operations, especially those linked to counterterrorism. Furthermore, U.S. journalists are still not protected by a federal shield law guaranteeing their right not to reveal their sources and other confidential work-related information. It's called the Fifth Amendment, you muppets! Also, regardless of what you may believe about the whole whistleblower brouhaha, I for one believe Snowden is a traitor and a KGB double agent, but regardless of that, the US government didn't prosecute the outlets who published these things. 
So how exactly was the government impeding on media freedom? No, seriously, if the US government were that totalitarian as this organization claims, then there would have been FBI raids in the offices of the Washington Post or the Guardian's New York office that simply did not happen. And again, the lack of a federal shield law is a red herring. Journalists, like anyone else, can plead the fifth. That, that's a much higher protection than almost every country in Europe. Now, speaking of most of Europe, the more I look at this map, the more I realize I should read it in the reverse. Countries in yellow and orange are much freer than the countries in white, with the exception of Hungary and Norway. Norway has a free media by and large, very comparable with most of Eastern Europe and Britain, and Hungary has a partially free media, comparable with Sweden and Germany. But except these two, the ranking of all the others in Europe is incredibly wrong. Now, how could this be? Well, part of it, I explained it earlier. Methodological flaws resulted from inherent, unquestioned socialistic thinking. But it's more than that. Part of the reason this ranking is almost entirely wrong is inherent relativism. Basically, the exact same thing is not a big deal if it's in certain countries, but it's a huge deal if it's in others. For example, Hungary loses media independence points because Orban tends to go more often to interviews on outlets that he likes than on outlets that he doesn't like. Sweden doesn't lose media independence points even though Löfven, the Swedish Prime Minister, does exactly the same thing. Another example, Romania loses media independence points because of a scandal of three years ago when a journalist was exposed as being a member of the intelligence community infiltrated in the press. Okay, fair enough, but then Sweden has a virtually identical case which is also more recent and more pertinent to the 2016 ranking, the case of Martin Fredriksson, a decorated journalist and a far-left activist including in the terrorist Antifa movement, was exposed as being an informant for Sweden's security police, or the SEPA. For some reason, Sweden doesn't lose media independence points over this, even though it's a current story for the year covered by this ranking. And I could go on like this for another half an hour without repeating myself. These are not honest mistakes. These are the result of a systemic leftist bias Whereas anything uh, done by leftist journalists that impede upon media freedom as understood by their own methodology is simply ignored, whilst the exact same thing done by someone on the non-left is considered a serious threat. Also, if random violence by some groups without governmental or business uh, sanctioning solely on the basis of speech in the media gets a country to lose points in terms of media freedom, like it happened in Italy, then how come Sweden doesn't lose points for the violence of Expo? For those unaware, Expo is a militant communist group in Sweden that acts pretty much like the Stasi in the former DDR, and the government pretends it doesn't exist. It practices do doxing of anyone to the right of Lenin, it burns the private homes of politicians with whom they disagree, it beats random people in the streets on racial criteria, that is, if they're white, it beats journalists from publications that are not in the pocket of the militant progressive government, and so on and so forth. How's that for media freedom? Reporters Without Borders doesn't say anything about this. The worst they have to say about Sweden is to quote a 2015 survey by National Council for Crime Prevention in which a third of the journalists polled say that they, had been, uh, they have been threatened. Well, yeah, but by whom? Why did this happen? Reporters Without Borders didn't uh, find it necessary to tell us, like they did with Germany, where they slander Pegida. but it goes even deeper than that. The more you look at this study, the more you realize that the only consistent factor for non-totalitarian countries is the degree of sanity. The saner a country is, the more likely it is to be ranked 35th or lower. The more insane a country is, the more likely it is to be ranked 20 or higher. 
Take Japan, for instance. Japan is ranked 72nd in the world in terms of press freedom. What does Reporters Without Borders have to say about Japan? Quote, the Japanese media, which are among the most powerful in the world, are free to cover what they want except state secrets. This rather vague c category is protected by a very harsh law that deters journalists from embarking on investigations. The Fukushima nuclear disaster, the imperial family's personal lives, and the defense of Japan are all state secrets. Close quote. So, in other words, the media can do whatever they want, which is resoundingly not the case in Germany or Sweden, but because they can't poke their nose and print state secrets about Japan's defense systems, that means they're just the same as Tanzania, Lesotho and Malawi. This is insane. I mean, there's no way I can describe this other than insane. No country in the world allows the press to roam free in military installations. Not even Finland ranked the freest in the world. I mean, seriously, good luck to the press going into the demilitarized zone and roaming free there. But Finland, because its media is mostly leftist, gets appraisal anyway. Japan, whose media is actually much freer than the Finnish one, gets to be relegated to African status because its media is mostly right-wing and much more nationalistic. That's really all there, all there is to it. Yeah, sure, it's easy to say that the media in Venezuela or North Korea, Laos, Saudi Arabia or China is less free than the one in Finland. But you don't really need a study for that. But except the obvious examples, this study gets almost everything else utterly wrong. And I contend that this is not by accident. I believe it is intentional. The honest mistakes are just way too consistent across the board to believe it's just a coincidence. Unless those who did the study are consistently idiots which I don't believe it to be the case. The folks from Reporters Without Borders have many flaws, but they're definitely not idiots. Anyway, I could go on like this for much longer, but the bottom line is this. Whenever you see a country ranking by something that is not easily measured, such as alcohol consumption or incidence of HIV per capita, or, you know, things that can be objectively assessed and there's little room for bias in the study itself. Whenever you see a country ranking that deals with the less than easily measured, measurable things, take that study not with a pinch of salt, but with several tons of salt. More often than not, that study is garbage, or mostly garbage, like this particular study, which gets almost everything wrong. The only part it does get right are the ones uh, ranking 130 or lower, although even there I have some objections. For instance, India is ranked 133rd, lower than the so-called Palestine. Now, excuse me, what exactly is the terrorist authoritarian ruling of India? Oh, that's right, there is none, and this ranking is bullshit. The fact that the government doesn't intervene when certain religious groups that is to say, Islam, complain about being uh, uh, offended. That's the main allegation to India. No, that's a feature, not a bug. But not according to reporters without borders. So yeah, that's basically all I had to say. Take these kinds of studies with a huge degree of skepticism, because just like the cathedral media will lie, so will the organizations allegedly defending journalists. Because after all, most of the time, these organizations are composed by the exact same people. I mean, if you look at their uh, administration board page, you will see that uh, there are people there from Le Monde, Reuters, Radio France Internationale, basically the cathedral media. And with all of that being said, thank you for watching, thank you for your continuous and generous support. Please do consider throwing up a shekel my way so we can keep this going. Don't forget to subscribe and rate this video, and uh, I'll see you around on Freedom Alternative.